Step 3. Entanglement swapping over 143 kilometers. In this experiment, uh, the point was to create link-level entanglement but between very distant nodes using only photons and that were traveling in free space. So the experiment was performed by Herbst in, uh, and collaborators in 2015 from University of Vienna and it was carried out in the Canary Islands, namely between the islands of La Palma, over here, that was hosting node A of the network, and Tenerife at, uh, over here, that was hosting node B. The distance between these nodes was 143 kilometers, and the ground stations located at node A and node B that were receiving and measuring the photons were elevated at 2.4 kilometers. The physical system used in this experiment were four polarization encoded qubits. Also, node A performed the entanglement swapping operation. Here's a schematic view of the experiment. We have our two measurement nodes, measurement one and measurement two over here, and two EPPS nodes, EPPS1 and EPPS2. To remind you, these are nodes that create entangled photon pairs using the uh, spontaneous parametric down conversion process. EPPS produced photons 1 and 2. 1 was directed uh, to travel to the measurement um, node 1, and 2 was directed to travel towards the BSA. EPPS2 also created two uh, entangled photons, uh, photons 3 and 4. 3 was dedicated to be measured at the BSA, and 4 was traveling all the way to Tenerife um, to measurement node 2. So all of these were located uh, in node A at La Palma, and at the other island, Tenerife, there was only the measurement end node. The Bell state measurement at the BSA projects 1 and 4 into one of these two possible Bell pairs. It's either a phi plus state or a phi minus state depending on the outcomes of the measurement at the BSA. As we said, we are using polarization encoded qubits, so the state uh, is given by this following form in the polarization basis. So we've got an uh, equal superposition of H and V and V and H for photons 1 and 4, where H is the horizontal polarization and V is the vertical polarization. Here are some important numbers regarding the experiment. The loss over the entire length of 143 kilometers was 32 dB. That's quite a lot. Pair this with the um, um, stochastic process of generating the entangled pairs. It's therefore desirable to have a very bright source, meaning a lot of pairs get generated per second. This can be achieved by increasing the intensity of the pump laser at the EPPS nodes. However, this has two effects. One effect, the positive one, is that the production rate at the EPPS node increases, as we would expect. On the other hand, the fidelity of the state that is projected between photons 1 and 4 decreases due to multi-pair emissions at the EPPS nodes. On the other hand, uh, if we lower the pump, we can achieve the following, following numbers. So the lowest pump used pump strength used um, uh, at the EPPS nodes was 60 milliwatts, and that resulted in about 15,000 counts per second. This is the case when the pump is low and the generation rate is low, but the expected fidelity at the end of the experiment is higher. The highest pump uh, level used um, at the EPPS node was 950 milliwatts, and that resulted in a much higher generation rate of 240,000 counts per second. How did the experimentalists verify that they managed to distribute entanglement between node 8 and node B? They performed violation of Bell's inequality. For states that were projected onto the psi plus state, they managed to calculate the Bell violation of 2.46 plus or minus 0.287. Clear violation of Bell's inequality and clear demonstration that the uh, uh, photons 1 and 4 really were entangled. If the state, on the other hand, was projected onto the psi minus state, they obtained a very similar Bell violation of 2.487 plus or minus 0.287. The data was accumulated over a period of 8,000 seconds. And for this particular run, the pump laser output was set to 60 milliwatts. To remind you, again, it was slow generation rate, but it allowed for nice and clean violation of Bell's inequality. That concludes our uh, 
um, discussion of the experiment performed at Canary Islands. Next, we're going to return to stationary memory qubits and how they can be used uh, to establish link-level entanglement.